The next video will be the next installment for <coughs> Animals Are Smarter Than Jack and we're up to Old Dogs, New Tricks and Unexpected Outcomes. Perhaps you remember Rex. You may have seen him in the media. He has appeared in every major national and state newspaper and an enormous number of magazines. More recently he is appearing in textbooks. He delivers an important message but more on that later. Rex's life began with promise. He was purchased as a pedigree <clears throat> Rottweiler by a young couple and, although labelled aggressive, he enjoyed his first two years of family life and adventures travelling around Australia with his owners. But, as so often happens, a baby came along and caring for a large dog was too much for the new parents. From this point on, Rex changed hands many times. Big breed dogs, especially aggressive ones, often attract the wrong type of owner and Rex ended up being used to train fighting dogs. He was muzzled so that he could not fight back and young dogs with potential were set on him. Too many injuries inflicted by humans and canines left him brutalised and lame. Rex was handed on, again, to become a backyard shop dog. Although an improvement, this was still a miserable and lonely existence for a dog suffering chronic pain and one that had once known the joys of family life. The yard was tiny, all concrete, and it backed onto a bus depot. <coughs> Rex was con continually teased from the other side of the fence. People shouted at him to provoke his aggression and then threw stones. There was no escape and as he did not leave this yard for six years, he became stir crazy. Unexpectedly, a young couple decided to give Rex another chance at a decent life and took him home. They treated Rex with kindness but the product of eight years of neglect and abuse was a vicious dog that could not trust or be trusted. He tried to bite everyone on sight and made it very difficult for them. It was at this time that Rex came to our attention. The young couple were visiting us at our bush property along with a large number of people, mostly dog lovers, for our annual get-together. We thought it would be fine for them to bring Rex as we have plenty of space and fenced-off areas. For many years, my husband Raymond and I have taken on large aggressive rescue dogs that had been abused and would otherwise have been destroyed. We have managed to assert psychological dominance and, with lots of love and care and good training, we have been able to transform these dogs into happy and balanced animals. Consequently, I was interested in Rex's progress and keen to meet him. Rex, however, behaved very badly. He bit a number of our guests and Raymond. We attempted to take Rex for a short walk, but he was far too lame. Raymond went home to get his truck to drive Rex back, but when he lifted him into the vehicle, Rex sunk his teeth into Raymond's arm. By the end of the long weekend, even our dog-loving friends were rejecting Rex as that horrible dog. On the last day of Rex's visit, I caught the biggest huntsman spider I'd ever seen when outside to release him in our orchid. At the same time, I turned to see Rex rushing forward to see what was getting all the attention. I don't know what came over me, I'm not a physical person, but before I knew it I was flying through the air rugby style, bringing Rex down in a tackle to protect the huntsman. I landed on my back with this overweight rock reeler clutched to my chest. There was stunned silence. He rolled off, shook himself, and then looked at me squarely in the eye. Something passed between us and I knew it was significance. I thought of Rex a lot after that weekend. The next news we had of him was that he'd bitten one of his new owners and a member of her family so things were not looking good. Not long after, the couple was separated and as neither could keep him, he was taken back to the shop yard. This caused me great anguish and over the next month, I drove my husband mad agonising over Rex's situation. We knew that taking Rex on presented major problems. We had our other dogs to consider, an older Rottweiler and a younger Doberman, and we were not prepared to put them at risk. Still, by this time, Rex was more than ten years old, so I reasoned that he wouldn't have long to live. I told Raymond that we could fill Rex's last months with happiness and comfort, and he finally agreed. We got a shock when we saw him again. He had visibly deteriorated. He was obese, his coat was patchy with a skin infection, and he could hardly walk. His return to the shop had clearly traumatised him. He was psychologically damaged, and his behaviour had further degenerated. Now, Raymond could be described as a macho man. He is strong and a bit on the aggressive side himself. He has little fear of dogs, but it felt he had more than met his match in Rex. I too have little fear of dogs. 
but not because I'm strong or aggressive. Quite the contrary. I lack fear because it is eclipsed for the most part by a passionate love for dogs. My parents lost count the number of times I was bitten as a child, as I could not pass a dog without attempting a cuddle. But this dog really scared me, and yet somehow I could see beyond that to the dog he ought to have been. At first Raymond thought that if he just kept on showing Rex kindness and patting him gently, Rex would come to trust him or get sick of biting. Thirty bites later he dropped that strategy. It was my turn. I sat next to Rex and explained that this really was his last chance that I believed he was a good boy and that it could all work out. For the next three days, I just kept repeating, You are a good boy, Rex. After a while, his eyes would glaze over and I could see him calming down and relaxing. He then started paying close attention to our other dogs and began to model off them. They had been obedient trained to advanced levels, so they were very easy to live with. Without any input from us, Rex learned all the basic commands requests within a week. If he slipped up on something, I'd say a quiet no Rex, and I can honestly say that it never happened again. Within months, Rex would have passed for an advanced trained dog. Rex proved to be not only highly intelligent and adaptable, but also fiercely loyal and protective. Not long after Rex joined us, I experienced an unpleasant and what could have been a very threatening incident involving two men at a bush dam. On recognising the situation, Rex came out of the water at a speed I didn't think him capable of. He did not attack, but positioned himself between the intruders and me. His hackles stood on end and he displayed a frightening snarl, accompanied by a thunderous roar. The intruders couldn't leave fast enough. I'm not sure exactly when the love affair between Raymond and Rex began. Raymond has loved all the dogs that have come into our lives, but I have never known him to be so besotted. He has made up a repertoire of little ditties about Rex and he sings these to him daily. Rex is Raymond's best mate. Although if you witness them, witness them during their nightly ritual, you would not think so. Rex, Raymond kisses Rex goodnight and Rex responds with a terrifying snarl and a blood-curdling roar. For some strange reason, they both love this performance and it gets repeated over and over. I don't really know what this is about. It is evocative of the savage Rex from long ago, and yet it is a ritual of love. The dogs also bonded and formed very strong attachments, much to our delight. If Rex went through the dog door first, he would pause with it on his rump and wait until the others passed through, rather than let it swing back into their faces. At first we thought it was just coincidence, but it happened so many times and with such regularity that eventually we had to conclude that we had a gentleman in our midst. We had put Rex on our special home-cooked vegetarian dog food and taken him swimming every day. The weight came off, his skin cleared and his coat glowed. His lameness disappeared and his behaviour became faultless. Rex had found his safe haven and a family and wasn't going to jeopardise it by blotting his copybook. And we had witnessed an extraordinary transformation from a backyard brute to a beautiful creature, empathetically attuned to the inner life of his family. But what truly sets Rex apart, what makes him uniquely Rex, is that strange interplay of the savage and the civilised. Rex's story, however, does not end there. In 2002, Environment Australia ran an awareness raising campaign with the message, Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. The adver advertisements were to be headed, Old Dogs Have Learnt New Tricks, and would feature an old dog with a newspaper in its mouth. The department invited people with old dogs to apply. We knew that Rex embodied this concept. It would be authentic. After all, how many times had he been recycled and he had certainly learned new tricks at a very old age? Raymond pointed out that Rex didn't fetch and that the competition would be stiff. Undeterred, I applied on Rex's behalf. He got shortlisted and then we had to submit a portfolio. A what? Mug shots and promotional blurbs led to the all-important interview in a large government building. Rex had his security tag clipped to his collar and behaved like a dignified senior public servant. The panel felt that Rex might look too aggressive for the pan campaign, but the photographer, who had liked the amateurish photographs in our folio, disagreed. Rex got the job. It was at this point that we remembered that Rex had never been asked to fetch. We panicked. We only had 24 hours to train him before he shoot. We needn't have. It took Rex 10 minutes to learn to fetch. Return, sit and hold, then drop the paper. The next day I was stinking hot and Rex was feeling it badly as old dogs do. The studio's air conditioning was inadequate and the temperature under lights was particularly uncomfortable for Rex. 
The shoot took three hours, but Rex performed everything that was asked him over and over again. The photographer and media liaison officer were extremely impressed, and we went home exhausted, but very proud of our media staff. The recycling campaign is still running, so next time you see a grey muzzled boy looking gently at you from the newspaper, magazine, or textbook, you'll know the story behind that dear old face. Rex turns 15 in May 2004, an impressive age for a male Rottweiler. We are planning a dinner party for him. It is one of his favourite pastimes these days, and he's on our friend's dinner party A-list, a far cry from that horrible dog they first met. He's often to be found lying on plush carpet beside someone's dining table, looking completely at home and oh so content. Rex, recycled, respected and revered. And that ends that instalment for Animals Are Smarter Than Jack.